Thunder! 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 Thunder Geeks are live! Hello, Thunderians. Welcome to 102.7 FM C-I-L-U. Around the world at luradio.ca or streaming video live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. That was Seagulls. Stop it now. Of course, from the bad lip reading guys. And I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. I just want to take this time to appreciate our Lord Savior. <laughs> <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> The new MMORPG <laughs> sponsor. <laughs> Use also the promo Kyle. code Thundergeeks. I no, bet, you, no, I no, bet no. you we could get one. Yeah, no, 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 I no. Mean, oh. I got every, us one. I'm pretty already, sure so. I walked by a church and their sign was like Raid Shadow Legends now coming. <laughs> Hi. We're your Thunder Geeks. If this is your first time tuning in, hi. Uh, each week we like to get together, talk about the nerdy stuff we've been up to this week, what's going on in our community, and try to make you laugh for an hour and a half. And the ongoing uh, joke today is just claiming that everything is sponsored by Raid Shadow. She it's doesn't know what it's it is. Carl's Jr. She doesn't know what it is. Raid Shadow Legends. Megan had never heard you, of it. I'm so playing. I'm like, now that I'm going to point this out, I'm just going to keep saying it. Now she's going to go watch a video and be like, in the background, she'll hear. Raid Shadow Legends. My my phone new. has been like around all day listening to this garb. <laughs> so she'll get ads now from like the <laughs> Overlord. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of like creepy Overlord things, I have never in my life on YouTube mm -hmm. looked up a bush life video where it's like the people go out in the bush and they like cut trees and they live Camping. out there for like twenty four hours. <laughs> C camping? Yeah, but they go out with like no gear, nothing, and they build like shelters and stuff. Camping. Camping? <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But like, I've never looked this up, never even thought about it because I don't care about the outdoors. And, uh. <laughs> oh, you hear that? Kyle hates the environment. I He's do. coming to burn koalas and eat trees. It's because the environment isn't sponsored by Raid Shadow, Shadow Legends. Legends. So, um. Yeah, my, my friend on Snapchat messaged, he's like, yeah, I'm just watching this Bushmaster video or whatever. Bushmaster! <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Whatever, okay, whatever Bush okay, Life I'm video sorry, it is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If someone messaged me and said they were watching a Bushmaster video, I would be like, is it porn? No. He, it's Luke Cage. He it's Luke Cage. for like four Which... hours will watch people just go out to the bush and like build shelters and like cut stuff out of like the dirt and build like that outdoor oh, right, hot stuff like stuff. The... Minecraft. There's... Yeah, essentially IRL Minecraft. Live, live action Minecraft. Pretty much. Uh, but, like, I've seen these videos where like they just, they build like uh, like a hot tub. Outside, outside in the dirt. Like, in the outside in the dirt and they like use like really, really old methods of like making bricks and stuff. Yeah. Like, they actually make each, each single brick out of like mud like and heat and, and stuff water and, and like... it's crazy. No, exactly. It's it's actually pretty elaborate because I wound up watching some because now YouTube recommended it to me after my friend sent me a thing that was like I'm watching it and I scrolled I like opened YouTube not five seconds later there was this big Bushmaster video thing. Bushmaster! <laughs> ah ah ah! Right in the middle and I was like they know and he's like oh I heard this thing where like there's a program that scans Snapchat for certain like things to recommend people, and I'm like, there's a program yeah. that scans everything to recommend you things. My favorite is oh, Google. Recently, uh, I don't know if you if you go on Facebook ads and like click, I don't want to see this. Mm -hmm. These have the like uh, relevant are you purchased and things, but they added a new category for you, why you don't want to see it. Too personal or knows too much. Knows yeah. too much. Getting knows, creepy. Yeah, knows too much about you. Knows too much is an, an option, and that's the point where I'm like. Okay, so at least you know that but, you're creepy. But no, here's the thing. That also goes into your consumer profile that you're also a consumer that hates when ads get too personal because then you start to distrust them. So then they just change the algorithm. They just dial which it is, back a little bit? Well, they, no, they don't dial it back. What they do is they now wait and they don't recommend you things as soon. You're still going to get recommended those things, but instead of in an hour from now, it's going to be in three days from now when you forgot that you talked about that. But you're still going to get the super personal creepy ads. Creepy ads here on Thunder Geeks. And of course, if you guys want to join the conversation, you can do so on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Thunder Speak, where you can take a peek inside the studio. Of course, we weren't here last week. Uh, of course, we had the uh, the great blizzard of Art 19 ah, back in the olden times. I mean, I could have handled Before it. Before the Raring 20s. About a decade ago. Yeah, last decade, uh, we, uh, we had them. I em. feel like I haven't seen you guys. Last year. Last year. 
I live on. Oh man, you know what? I miss you so much. It feels like I haven't seen you since the last decade. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm trying to hard not to make <clears> these <throat> jokes. Excuse me. The decade ends in 2021. Yeah, but no one cares. You do that voice too well. What, the nerd style voice? Let's talk about the battle before Yavin and after the oh. battle of Yavin. Why did they mark all the dish by the one Death Star but not the second Death Star? Yeah, see, Kyle's is way better. Yours is about a six, his is a twelve. <laughs> I thought you said the battle of Yavin, and I was like, he's, praise Yavin. He's got more phlegm in it, and I, I, I just, my you mouth is too dry. You know like? Okay, you know right, like, let me get makes, some, like, like Davis when he does okay. the warp zones thing. You know Mort. in Family Guy, Meg's like creepy stalker boy. Mort Golden. Mort is, no, Mort's not the son. Mort's, Mort's the, the dad. Mort Jr. No one cares Neil. what the son's name is. That's Neil. it. Yeah. Neil. 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 You sound like Neil. Remembering secondary Family Guy characters on Thunder <laughs> Geeks. <laughs> is it really secondary? <laughs> yeah, they have a, I rinse my retainer. They have a lot of plot points that they have to go into. <laughs> uh, Here's a uh, deep lore. Like old Kyle? Sometimes the pharmacy gets robbed. And my dad has to go through quite the predicament. Stop. <laughs> I hate this. I hate this now. I'm going home. Oh, okay, so part of what we missed is uh, we were going to do the gift exchange last week. We were going to talk about the Star Warsian problem, issue, circumstances. But we're like just going to move that all over this week. <laughs> so gift exchange first. So, so uh, we did Secret Santa this year, and... Uh, we generally don't know who's gotten who, but we did have a bet set as well. A bet set. A set bet. A set bet. So here's... Uh, Street Kids. Chris is actually asked to go first here. Now, uh, Rob's bet is that I was a secret Santa. In the event you changed, I've got the original source who knows, so no source. I have not changed anything. Nope. Hey, I Rob, think fast. <laughs> I was your secret Santa. <laughs> I kind of knew, but... Uh, Rob, you guessed it two, like, two weeks before the snowstorm, and I was just like, okay, I guess he knows. I didn't even make this bet. You, you I went, looked at me huh? afterwards, you're like, I bet you Chris is, or Andrew's my secret Sweat. Santa. I sat there, and I'm like... I got me a Harley Quinn Funko. From the, from, like, the new Harley Funko, as well as, um, I'm just going to remove this quickly. Yeah. There you go. One of those people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't mind knowing because sometimes the barcode. I hate stickers. <laughs> Me too. So who's next? Well, you. You. Yeah. So what we'll do is we're oh. just gonna we're gonna do it in the Sweet. order. Okay. So here you go. Oh, so Rob got me. So Rob got me. Okay. Okay. This is gonna go badly really quickly, but no, we'll make I, I this can't work. Rap so we're gonna make this work, Chris, because Chris is actually holding two since uh, we're unfortunately we're gonna have Alicia, but uh, it's the a snow kind of. <laughs> Didn't I do love it. That band. There's ah, Public Enemy and Anthrax made a great song. Yes. That probably sounds great. Okay. Okay. Well, Are we well it's ASMR also taped. This? You have to eat it don't. Now. Don't even. Oh man. <laughs> oh, this is this is a very elaborate packaging for a book. But read the title. The American Association of Patriots presents. How to talk to your cats about gun safety and abstinence, drugs, Satanism, and under dangerous things that threaten their nine lives. This sounds okay, low key. Good job, Rob. <laughs> Reading that title, that is essentially me as a book. This is also going to be the name of my biography of how to t the American Patriots Association. Wait. The American Association of Patriots presents how to talk to your cats about gun safety and <laughs> abstinence, drugs, Satanism, and other dangers that threaten their nine lives. So I do want to tell a story about how I found this, because I think the story of how I found your gift is almost as good as the gift itself. I decided to find Andrew's gift by going to Amazon and literally typing in the words, stupid gift. <laughs> and I'm just scrolling through all the stupid gifts. So many were sex toys. And I'm like, yeah. eh. And then I saw... Not the on the air. Exactly. That's for the after show. <laughs> so then I saw that book, and I'm like, okay, this is this is Andrew in a nutshell. So I just flipped to one of the random pages, and one of the, like, it's all broken up into, like, little little blurbs and questions. stuff. It's actually really, really well laid out, this book. It's like question um, and answer then, things. So this one says, why are so many cats posting pictures of themselves on the internet? Should I be worried about my cat doing this? How can I tell if my cat is doing something online he shouldn't be? Okay. 
on like, <laughs> what should I do if I suspect my cat is the victim of cyberbullying? <gasps> Yeah, what oh, if someone's no. making fun of nuggies? I'm going to cyberbully your cat, Andrew. <laughs> wow. Because then you at least have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I like that. That's cute. I go ham when it's Christmas. Well, speaking of Christmas, so my gift oh, was no. actually Chris. And there's only one thing that will grant Chris's heart. <laughs> it's an Arby's gift card. <laughs> okay, I did have a secondary Smart. plan, but I chickened out on it. I was going to do it, but I'm like, I don't know how to ask Arby's. But I can't have anyone come with me for confidence because then I'd ruin Secret Santa. I wanted to go to Arby's when they were dead with the recorder and get them to record a message for Chris. <laughs> I'm, pre- okay, hold on. I'm pretty sure after we drew everything, like three of you told me who your Secret Santa was right away. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I have a great story about Chris and Arby's. Oh no. We all do. Would you like to know what Chris's Arby's nickname is? Yes. Everyone knows oh, it. No, yeah. no. They actually gave him a new nickname. What? So. Okay, so I'm in the drive through with You're Chris. You're in the know. I'm in the know. I'm in the know. I'm in the drive through with Chris. And he orders his order, which is... 20 matzo sticks. 30 matzo sticks. 30 matzo sticks. <gasps> which is how many orders of matzo sticks? Uh, five, six pieces. Five to six pieces. No, five, six pieces. Five, six pieces. Okay. And that's 30... 30... <laughs> 30 anyway, nuggets. 30 nuggets. No, not six. Matzo sticks. You were close. And then they were like, oh, it's matzo stick guy. Cool. Okay. We'll have, we'll, and then drive, drive through, you know? So we get there and she starts like gathering his money and she's like, do you have a name other than matzo stick guy? <laughs> and then he was like, no, I'm a ghost that eats, that runs oh, on cheese yeah. or something. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, ha ha ha. And then she brings his order around after it. She's like, <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> She's like, here's your owner, Mr. Ghost. Have a good day. So Chris's Arby's nickname is Mr. Ghost. Oh, see, I, I got I a different... Cheese Ghost. See, I got a different cheese one on ghost. New Year's Day. Oh. Or Sorry, New Year's Eve. Is cheese ghost. He it's was driving ghost. through, and he makes his order, and all I hear is, I'm going to paraphrase this because radio, oh, fudge, it's him. <laughs> yeah, they, they know. There's that one person see, in the background. I don't, I don't know how to bring it, because I, I want to talk to him, like, okay. I want a Christmas gift for my friend. This is going to sound weird, but do you know of a guy that comes in and just orders an absurd I, amount of matzo sticks? You just go in like, we need I, a gift for the matzo guy, and they're like, yep. 100% would have gone in and slapped that recorder on the table and been like, hello. Please talk. I need you to record a Christmas message for the guy that buys your entire stock of matzo sticks. And they're like, oh, the one. And they all like raise their hands in the kitchen and they're like, oh, oh <laughs> bring the whole box, drop in the fryer. I'm not going, sure buddy? how he's not Hold a up. dyer. He's made of cheese and he shall please. I have a better song. stick love from head to your knees. That's pretty good. I, I told you he's the bard. <laughs> Throw a stick to your cheese ghost. Oh, master oh, no. of plenty. Oh, Arby's of plenty. Oh, that works. I like that. Oh. oh. I'm trying oh, to cut here back. He comes. <laughs> He's a cheese eater. Whoa. <laughs> Watch out, boy. He'll eat you. Nope. He'll eat some Whoa. cheese. Okay, so this does work, though. Because... Alicia unfortunately wasn't well, able to join us since she's doing responsible school things. Chris now gets to fill in with as Alicia, so you have to do your best Alicia impression. <laughs> Little higher. Here you go, Megan. <laughs> Happiness. So you have to start off. Okay, so I'm gonna do this for the stream. Oh yeah, I can be Alicia. I'll be. Alicia. No, 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 me. Let it be Alicia. Damn it. Oh, but Alicia. you're you're receiving She's taking the, gift. the shirt off. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing about Alicia: you have to get like her mannerisms in there. She does like she does tan stuff just like me, right? She goes, she goes, she goes hey, like. Hey guys, guys. I hate, I hate no, it. that's not. Listen. She doesn't say. Okay, guys. Yo, she Jojo Siwa, calm like down over that. there. <laughs> she's, she's like, she goes. Oh, okay. So I got Megan for my Secret Santa. Just kidding. That's not Alicia. I love you. Actually, that was really close. That was really good. Oh, cool. Andrew, no. this is okay. Cool. So Alicia got me a really cute bag. 
first of all. Thanks, Lisa. That's it. Only bag. Only bag. And then she also got me this shirt that's so dope. It's a pastel yellow, and it says, uh, save the freaking bees. Save the freaking bees, and it's got man. A of a bee on it. I love it. Beautiful. So good. And then, bee. oh. Okay, so we were in Marshalls, and I spotted this, and I lost uh, my mind. Uh, it is a tea infuser <laughs> shaped like <laughs> a seahorse. Uh -huh. His little under belly. The tea. His little belly <laughs> under the tea, and uh -huh. his little belly is full of holes. So he. And what did the, we do with that, Megan? We stashed it behind some other stuff. <laughs> we stashed it behind some other stuff, and no, there was. We we. What I did, they're like, oh, I don't know, blah blah blah. And I'm like, hold on, I got this. I grab it. I go over to the organic chip aisle that has <laughs> the same chips in there for the past four years. Even though Marshall's just opened, those chips are four years old, and just put it at the very back and seven. then Alicia comes back the next day and plecks it out <laughs> he's adorable I love him oh my god he's a lot bigger than I thought he was gonna that's be. what she said oh, he's so cute his little snoot hangs over the side of the teacup and it's gonna shoot like uh, tea babies out of it because in, ma in males the seahorses give birth There's that's the only thing I know about seahorses is that they spurt out from their chest a whole bunch of little bitty seahorses. Oh, but wait, there's more. It's a huge cup. A hug, and it says bee kind on it, and it's got bees. This is really well made. Oh my gosh. I love this. You just say it's a bee's knees? Yes. It's a really sturdy Do bees bee. have knees? It's a really oh. nice teacup. Like, if I can hold it with both hands and feel small, that's... It's quite a sturdy penis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're surrounded by tall guys. I, mean, like, I think you should feel small. Is it bee flavored? Oh, carrot cupcake tea. This is my favorite. <laughs> She's going to make us oh. smell the tea. Watch. Oh, gosh. Oh, yes. I, you have to smell this. It's I, so good. I don't have to do anything. Oh, oh it's totally sealed like shut. Like, I can't pop We'll do it during a break. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do it during we'll, the we'll break. We'll do it during the break. Megan, show. Megan, who's yes. your secret Santa? Oh, my secret Santa is... Um, this guy right here. Hi. Hi. Hi, Dave. Kyle. Hi. <laughs> it's How are Dave. You? <laughs> Dave Meet the Dave. Barbarian. Croco Kyle. Croco Kyle. Dave's what a Kyle. wicked name. Right? <laughs> Thanks, for Urban Dictionary. You need a friend named Cal so that you can have Croco Kyle and Caligator. <laughs> I did. Caligator? <laughs> <laughs> it's got wow time. I love it. It's wow time. You're if welcome. only this was last week. I'm sorry. Before I literally just paid yesterday for oh. my wow time. Oh. <laughs> I was like, it was the will of the gods. Yeah, that's uh, okay. See, I like. Well, now your next one's paid. I like months. trying. I like trying to get uh, gifts that will be like used. You know, like I know Kyle plays a lot of wow, and if I can help him along with no, he doesn't. Sixty days. What makes you say that? Um, Kyle's then, never touched a video you know, game in his life. That's wow. Two months that he hey. doesn't have to worry about this year. Kyle doesn't worry. Enjoy your February and March, I guess. Yeah, you gave him the shortest True, month. Thank you. Oh, oh, that's sad. It that still, goes, still goes from like 30 days from the time you like put it in. This is so See, with all this bee stuff, we really gotta like strap Megan down like Clockwork Orange style and make her watch bee movie. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I don't oh like yeah, that. I was wondering I where this was going. Your reactions I was like, where is this going? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, this is sounding problematic, Rob. It's like, watch B-Movie. Oh, that's wholesome, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you like jazz? <laughs> I mean, depends on where we watch it, I guess. What's the deal with all these bees? <laughs> so, God, <Not> Alicia. <laughs> okay, so you want me to be Alicia? Well, I don't... <laughs> okay, so here's the fun fact. The site I've been trying to get it from has been down for four and a half weeks. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So we're going direct source in the next little bit here. Oh. But she'll love it. Oh, oh okay, okay. I got five minutes to break. <laughs> oh. I know what it is. It's the clone your boyfriend you showed us in the basement, right? The clone boy? Because <laughs> everyone needs the a little The DIY piece of Kyle. kit. Let's not talk about clones. You don't want the Let's DIY not talk kit? About Kyle's basement. That's my work right there. Kyle's basement. Actually, here's a thought puzzle for you. Is it NSFW if you work in a sex shop? Yes. That's why I get oh, to go look on like the yeah. toy sites and stuff like that at work. I, I guess that's that's fair. So and, I guess we know read, what he's getting, Alicia. Read their ball <laughs> oh. and descriptions. Oh my god. <gasps> these things are so descriptive. 
No way, oh, man. Oh, guys, fallen description. There's what? There's some that are like four paragraph long, very detailed descriptions about something that's about like two and a half centimeters. Like you long. might as well just write an erotic novel to yeah. go along with this. If I to- had to guess that toy, and who it was targeted at, when the ones that come with long, flowery descriptions. What do they stimulate, Kyle? What? The mind. Happiness. Oh, the mind. The mind. Okay. <laughs> the mind. Things, I, uh, they stimulate the mind. A part of the anatomy. We'll do it on break. We'll do it on break. We'll just, <laughs> I want to do it on break. <laughs> Andrew. Guys, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, we are Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, around the world at luradio.ca, streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak, where your Thunder Geeks will be right back. And we're back. You're listening to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, around the world at luradio.ca. That was Toss a Coin to Your Witcher by uh, Armair Beats. Welcome back to the show, folks. Of course, uh, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, around the world at luradio.ca, or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak, where you can join in the conversation. So, uh, so, uh, Cal, Ka- I understand, uh, Ka- you've been, uh, Ka- quite pleased with Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which is, uh, of course, the, the witch you was referring to, so which watch of, uh, you watched in the witch watch? <laughs> huh? Okay. I- is it a wrist watch with your witch watch? So I'm gonna, witch, watch? Witch I'm gonna establish this out the gate with the witcher. Okay. This is the best video game adapted media I've ever seen. Isn't it adapting? That a is book? a low bar. Yeah, it's, it's a book. book. I know. The first two are the books. They're eventually going to start going to like the, because okay. they do reference the Wild Hunt and stuff like that. Oh, oh yeah. hold on here, hold on here though. But it's a book, adapted to a game. Adapted to adapted, a movie. Adapted, adapted to its movie. Well, to show. series. Show series. Series. Because that's one thing that I think has been the big challenge with video games as well is it's inherently difficult to compress a sixty-hour story of experience. Oh, The Witcher is much longer into than that. two hours. <laughs> yeah. The Witcher's but, like a 200 hour game. Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also with a lot of, like, a lot of stuff in it. Yeah. A lot yeah. of lot. But that's, just that's the, the third But one. I mean, like, in general, that's usually the issue with adapting over video game media stories <coughs> into, uh, into, you know, movies. Because you just cannot give that much exposition within two hours. And if you bank on having three sequels, you're not going to get them. I like the... I guess the cool thing about this one is the first season is literally just establishing uh, the backstories of the three characters, your three main ones, Siri, Yennefer, and, of course, Geralt. Yennefer. Yennefer, yes. Yeah, it's spelled with Y. Y-E-N-N-E. Geralt. Yeah. It sounds like someone sneezed and just didn't want to change the birth certificate. Yennefer! Yeah. What? So no Triss? Uh, she's in there, yeah. Okay. She's around every so often, but not, like, focused on yet. But, yeah, so it's, it establishes, like, Siri is... Um, a princess for a kingdom. And she's and the, she the, got, the white-haired one, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's got magical powers. Not Henry Cavill. She's like super, she's like a special being because she's like uncrazy powerful, but she doesn't quite understand it, but everybody else is like, she's the chosen one. They do but say she, mutant a lot. Yes. Yeah, which well, made me think. No, thing. Geralt's a mutant. They may, but wasn't the wizard in the first one referring to she's got the mutant gene? She, she can do magic. Like this is X-Men. Blood. It's just like ancient blood kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's X-Men. From, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are there's quite a few X-Men that have their, you know, mute, their X-Gene related to something magical. Medieval Scarlet Witch. X-Men. It's like what, Medieval. One of the big things about this that people don't like is that it's three different timelines going on at the same time Ooh. as you're watching it. So like, like for better, for worse. Yeah, so you at, at one point, like, <laughs> Geralt shows up in Ciri's story in the castle but in his story, it's already way past there. I think way past that, and like the events already happen, and she's still trying to find him, because everybody's like, "Yo, go find Geralt. He'll help you." And Geralt's like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> Don't I, ju- I just want to kill things. <coughs> I want to find my mom. Her name's Martha." Has- there's no Your mom other. Named Martha too. No word of a lie. This character has virtually no motivations in this thing other than. Money. <sighs> all right, I'll kill it. <laughs> well, like, you, you gonna pay me for? All right, I'll kill it. Is it a monster? All right, I'll kill it. And like, even as everybody hates witchers because they're mutants, right? They're not. They're special people. They have mutiny powers. Make signs in the sky. And yeah, they make shoot it, fire. Do shoot magics and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. He I force mean, pushes in this. I, know I was good. Like, at, he does. 
I'm so surprised that a titled series called The Witcher involves magic. I never would have guessed. Well, we even got, we even got to Yennefer's story. Yennefer? Yennefer. Yanni? It's Jennifer, Laura. but without an I, it's an E. It's Yanni. And, and with a Y. At it's the Laurel. Oh, Yanni. Yanni. So, Yennefer. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we all know in For Witcher Part, like, Geralt's... The Witcher, all he does is kill things, travels around on his horse, Roach. Little mutated. Yeah, he's, he's a special horse, Roach, that he goes around on. Special. And, yeah, he's, he's a little bit special. But, um, yeah, so they go around. And then the third one that flashes to is Yennefer's story, where she's, like, def- she's got deformities. She's mm-hmm. got, like, a messed up jaw. She's got a hunchback. She's got purple eyes, right? And whew, they did a really good job on this. Some other show I can't remember was on Netflix said that they couldn't use purple eyes because it was too like costly really yeah but like the witcher's like here you go here you go we're gonna use purple eyes <laughs> here's purple eyes I would have never thought that purple eyes is costly yeah it, it was it was contacts I'll, I'll try to like find the link for it on the break or whatever but um I mean yeah there, there could be something about just the way you have to light the effects when it's purple could make things difficult so so Yennefer's big thing is she was bought by a, like a witch council kind of thing. So she was going to get trained in the magic-y. Who that do we... seems like a bad way to recruit people is to buy them. Well, her dad sucks. She comes from a poor family, so her dad This part like, I remember. Her dad... He's... Witch lady shows up. She's like, how much for a pig? Ten gold. How much for her? Four. Yeah. <laughs> She's deformed, so she's you know got no worth to him. Oh, you know what? Actually, if if yeah, in it's medieval. Medieval times, if you're crippled, yeah, uh, I would rather be sold to a witch council. I think. So yeah, she gets taught in the like magic, spooky, oogly boogly ways. Um, and then so there's a big thing that you can do in this is um, a transforming magic where mm-hmm. it turns you into beauty <laughs> incarnate, basically like a, be- uh, a beautiful form. Wow, Melisandre, essentially. Yeah, essentially, it's, it's Melisandre's ugly boogly powers. So, um, she's banned from doing it because she was going to go do... All of these witches get Bad sold to things. kings to be their, like, magician of the court Oh, kind of deal. Merlin was a slave. Yeah, essentially. Well, no, the dudes are fine. Oh. It's oh, just the women. Just the women. Oh, the ones okay. have to go. And then you know, the dudes are, like, respected, and they're like, yeah, what's up, bro? Come to my court. And then the women are like, yeah, we'll get, we'll take that one. The evil Monopoly women. Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, she's banned from that, and she um, goes ahead and does it anyways, because <coughs> turns out Yennefer's crazy powerful, because... Main character. One, yeah, plot, ar- <laughs> plot armor, essentially. Plot. Important. Plot. Yeah, plot armor. Plot. You can never follow. I'm she, just an okay witch. It is a very graphic transformation sequence, where Ooh. he like, just paints a little bit of like blood on her back and like a little bit on her face to like transform or whatever. And then she starts like retching back, and you watch her bones like crack and deform. And nice. I love that stuff. That's yeah. so cool. It, it was crazy. Ah. And then she like, you know, stands up all... <clears throat> Ugly, bigly, when I emerge from this blood and anarchy and gore, I'm just going to be so gorgeous that everyone will die. And you know, now that she's lived like a life of being a you know weirdo, cripple, non magically ugly, bugly character, uh, she turned into a super magical one and doesn't really care about people. <laughs> I mean, can't blame her. Her main one of her main motivations is to have a child in the show because it take the transformation thing takes away her ability to have a child. Oh, Aww. which she didn't want one in the first place, but they took it away from her, so she's like, "I want it. I know <laughs> Give it to me." Yeah, I can't have babies, but I want. To and even at one point, she's like, "Oh man, a witch stealing babies—that's unheard of." She's she's been hired to escort a royal person back to their kingdom <laughs> in case of like assassins, right? You know, turns out assassins are happening or whatever. She starts, like, teleporting around with the, the lady and her baby. And then eventually just takes the baby and teleports away from the, like, princess. It just leaves her there. What is she, the Goblin King now? She just, like, takes the baby. She's like, it's mine! I don't know. Ah, it's dead. And then she buries it in the sand. She's no David Bowie. She's better than David Bowie. Whoa. Bite your tongue, blasphemer! It's Yennefer. Yeah, no for yeah, Laurel for. So, like, do the three timelines eventually going to start tying together? At the, at the very end, they, like, clash Gosh. together. Like, you know, a series story winds up meeting. Um, the, the big driving thing right now is Ciri's kingdom gets invaded. She was uh, set up to date or mar- get married to one of the princes of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And this kingdom storms in. He's like, you 
well, we're the best. We're gonna we're gonna have her. And, blah, blah, blah. and the queen's like, you guys seriously just suck. <laughs> you guys are just miserable, depressive little, you know, terrible, awful people. things. Yeah, it basically just ruins them, right? Well, they don't take quite too kindly to this and come. Oh, back. Yeah, a humiliated man is not. Yeah, so they a humiliated come... man with power is not a great thing. Even though they think they come back and they're like the kingdom's attacking, and she's like, no, no, they're not. The pansies. A couple episodes later, her castle's on fire. She hops out a window. It wasn't even a couple. It was the next. Because I've only seen the first two. The next episode, she just hops out of the like, ledge. She's like, well, time to die. <laughs> Downside is, yeah. oogly boogly magic happens. And, you know, you just cut out, I think it was her, like, stomach or spleen or something. And they ate it. And... Well, like, with a nice fava beans and a like nice Chianti. I cut out a piece of her skin and they ate it. Why? So track the daughter. Oh. The bloodline. Magic. Oogly yeah. boogly. Oogly boogly magic. Oogly boogly magic. That's this whole show. It's just that everybody <laughs> just pulls out some random oogly boogly magic and everybody's like, yeah, it's fine. And then Henry Cavill pulls out his oogly boogly. There's also a gold dragon. A gold dragon. Smaug. No, it's a little, little gold dragon. Now, when you say gold, is it a gold colored dragon or a gold hoarding dragon? No, like a gold colored dragon. And everybody's like, they don't exist. It's a myth. And you know it's a British dragon. Oh What's my the difference? Gosh. Smog? British dragon? It's. I don't know why. Okay, they're... when you say British dragon, you mean that it it's going to have four Brit- appendages and wings. It speaks in a British accent. Voice by oh, Benedict it's Cumberbatch. Literally, it's literally a British. It's a talking dragon. They all talk. Yes. Oh, I didn't know this was Dragon Tales. That's all you had to say. Is this is the live action adaptation of Dragon Tales. At one point, been. somebody hires Tales, Geralt and a bunch of people Tales. to go up and like get a dragon egg, right? And yeah. Kill the dragon. They get up there, and girl's like, well, the dragon's not doing it. It's, it's just defending its home. Stop, you know, Stop messing its, with yeah, it. And it'll stop, stop invading the dragon's home, and maybe it'll leave you guys alone. The dragon's like, yes, that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's like, right? It turns, and Geralt kills the people that are trying to kill the dragon. Gold, not a boy. Gold, gold dragon flutters Geralt. in, and Geralt's like, hmm, they don't exist. And he's like, it's right in front of you. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, the rest of the team's just off doing something. I don't know what Yaskier's doing. Who's probably the best character in this. And in our show post, that was you. <laughs> the bard? He's a bard that shows up. Uh, girl's drinking in a bar. And uh, everybody at the beginning of the show hates the Witcher. Hates Witchers. Yep. They're misery. They're, like, scum of the earth, whatever, whatever. But, um... Eventually, you know, Geralt winds up saving Yaskier from everything. Yeah. Because he's a bard and he's weak and he doesn't know what he's doing. He's an idiot. Bard. <laughs> he's an idiot, yeah. And he, even at one point he goes to, uh, invited to like a gathering of kingdoms. And he hires Geralt to protect him because he's wound up sleeping with a bunch of the king's wives. <laughs> so he's like, oh, I'm gonna, he, yeah, he's like, I'm going to show up and they're going to hate me. Geralt shows up. He's like, well, it's your own fault. And he walks away. <laughs> like, well, it's on you, man. Stop getting your dinky stinky in the king's wives. And like a lot of the <laughs> plot winds up like revolving around Yaskir being saved because at one point Geralt's like fishing for a, a jinn in the river. Just there's a, apparently a jar in there and he's just gonna fish it up and ask for his three wishes or whatever. So he's now fishing it up and his wish is to go to sleep. He hasn't slept for like two days, so he's like. Sleep, so I'm gonna capture a gin to do that. Just needs some ambience. <laughs> what is this guy's motivation? He has nothing. I Yo, just he, need a little bit of ambience. He's just doing whatever, and then you know, Yaskier's like, "You have the personality of a pie with no filling." <laughs> My favorite <laughs> insult. And it's just ring rags on him, and he's like, "No, it's my gin." It takes it from him. He's like, Nuh! "Breaks the jar," <laughs> which winds up, you know, setting the gin free. Who punches? him in the throat with magical energy so it's like swollen and he's just like vomiting blood. Geralt's like silence. <laughs> he's like Jaskier's like dying in a tree in the background. You just see him like heaving and stuff and Geralt's like I guess we should go find someone for you. <laughs> <laughs> like takes him to a doctor and the doctor's like oh, you need a wizard. It's like <sighs> Wow, oh, wizard king! You know, you go and sleeps with the wizard. <laughs> the, the Good s- strategy. Girls are just like, you know, it's fine. We'll sleep together. Do it. And then, you know, curse magic. 
Turns out Renfrey is like a fox demon thing. Oh, that and just it, seduces for yeah. sex and then, then curses? Then does the magic you ugly stuff. I mean, to be Ooh. fair, wouldn't you want to seduce Henry Cavill? I, I, I'd let him do things to me. I don't know. Magic STDs sounds like a really terrible thing. That sounds really hard to get rid of. Seems like some hocus pocus. Need some... <laughs> It's more of a, it just scritches. <laughs> Instead of being on medical metaphorical fire, you pull down your pants and just Actual combustion. Fire. It's like, yeah, I'm trying to do something with it, but... When you oh, go to like, the bathroom with it's the like, flames over? <laughs> Since my last encounter, I wasn't... I'm, I've been feeling a lot of, like, flame and just bangs. Like, oh, no, that's chlamydia. It's like, no, 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 no. I mean, actual flame. I feel like this it's is like a it's biblical ghost. story about the burning bush. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, go. Well, I mean, I mean, it's not uncommon to yellow god, oh god. <laughs> so, so what, so what we're saying here is, folks, guys, if, you got, if you're going to have sexual relations with a magical being, wear a magical condom. True. Keep, you know. <laughs> so, like, one of the things I told Chris, I think, during this is it actually feels like Geralt's being played by a character because he keeps getting beaten up by, like, every quarter. Like, he'll, like, turn the corner and gets, like, reamed on by a, an elf or something and, like, gets kicked <laughs> and, like, knocked out constantly. You know what? It's accurate. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's that's playing the Witcher. You go to do something, you just get slapped around by, like, a monster in the corner. You're like, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> like, you for two hours. Yeah, you're like, confirmed. yeah, play it around, and you're like, slap something down. You're like, yeah, cool. You turn the corner, and, like, around the tree, just this big thing comes and smacks you. You're like, cool. <gasps> Doesn't Henry Cavill actually play the game? He does. He is wow. a fan of the Witcher. Wow. I mean, how is he in this? Like, He is very good. Oh, he is very okay. good to the character. He looks like it. He acts like it. You know, you can see him in the screenshot that you got on there. That is legitimately what you know, it looks like in the game. Hobo Superman. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you, does he only have one sword in the Netflix series, or does he have two different ones? Just one right now. Okay. Because this is like the two short novels that came out like prequel esque kind of pre thing. way back. Is it like pre mutations too or like post mutations? No, nope. it's post mutations. He's got his. He's got his cat eyes. Yeah, he's got like... his his yellow eyes to see. Things. You better with my chat. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I'm also curious. Um, so, how related is the story to the games? Well, like this right now, because like especially with being split up into three, is it more like it's standing place before the games, during the game, right, the, after right the game, now, or this is before. separate? This is before. This is before. This is the novels that came out before the games. <laughs> okay. 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 So if, if, that that's the thing where I, I know I'm, it's, it's <laughs> to see because when you're adapting a book into a series, that's one thing because the story narrative structure can be very similar. Yeah. But with games, it tends to be very task oriented. Well, like these and ones the are problem like... with making a very task oriented uh, movie is it ends up just being a road trip movie, and if it's not interesting dialogue, which yeah. a lot of these won't have, it's not an interesting movie. Well, like if you if you don't like fantasy, you're not gonna like this. I'm kind of equivalent to like Game of Thrones. It's almost yes. identical. Don't say that. <laughs> it's almost identical in terms of like when it was good content. Yeah, the content of what it looks like, what yeah. it feels like. All I mean, that it's sort of definitely stuff. what they're swinging for. It's like this is our attempt to do the new medieval show of betrayal and intrigue and magic and dragons. And it and works pretty well. Uh, boobs. Yeah, there's there's a lot of nakedness. It is. I, I do show. like any flaccid wieners. That's important uh, for Game of Thrones. I mean, the last couple seasons, there were a lot less flaccid wieners. See... But those first four seasons, tons of flaccid wieners. I'm pretty wieners. sure there were some naked dudes. Imagine... But did you see their wiener? Yeah, like full on. Oh, perfect. Okay, as long as we have flaccid... Because that, that's the thing. So if we're going to show breasts, we have to show flaccid wieners. I want equal time. I have or a just... question. Yeah, okay. The big name actors like in Game of Thrones, did we ever get to see their flaccid wienies? Some of them, um, but a lot of them died. Oh, okay. G Geralt's naked a lot, like... In general, most of the time, Henry Cavill. Yeah. Yes. Do you see? You don't his see his. Weenie? You don't see his. Ding you see but his you do butt. see his butt. You do see his butt. I feel that's like... a, okay. I mean, it's a good butt. I was really um, disappointed when we didn't get to see Grey Worm. One of the, your your introduction when Geralt meets Yennefer for the first time, mm -hmm. and uh, Yennefer is his love interest in the game, by the way. Ah. So, the first time you meet her, or he meets her, she's literally controlling one massive village orgy in a room 
where she's just sitting there at the very top where she's like, well, this is fun. I, I like this. I like the wizard who had the tower where he's like, pretty much use illusion magic. It's just surrounded with naked women and Geralt's like, what's up with this? And he's like, what? I'm trapped here. Might as well make it look pretty. I if you're mean... stuck in the tower, you might as well. Yeah. Hmm. So it's honestly, it's it's pretty good. There's some you know weird scenes. Like Jennifer loses her virginity with like a crowd of people watching. Like, mm, very good. Mm. Good job. Mm. Good job. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. You do see her naked, like full on. Oh, of course. Yeah. Pre and post no. hump or just post just hump? Post hump. I, I don't. Why? Why is? Why would that be important? To Equal you opportunity. Or, or like, but like before well, guess, and after. What does well, before and after matter? On. I guess she's naked when she gets the transformation thing done, so you do see her, like, okay. hunchback transformation as well. Because, you know, I want to see them practical effects. Because it's easy to shove a pillow under your shirt. Most people, like, I've been trying to, like, sell the show to people, and I tell them not for, like, Henry Cavill and Carol. I'll be like, yo, Jennifer is pretty cool. Like, watch for this, like, doesn't take no for an answer, does what she wants, super powerful. <laughs> But slightly crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sources. <laughs> a complex character that actually is flawed. Yeah, she's like she's not perfect by any means. You know, stealing babies and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minor inconvenience. Minor inconvenience. So this is mine now. Yeah, she's she's pretty good. But the main characters, like all of them, including Yaskier, who's just the best part. Um, I mean, we just heard him sing, and it's. Yeah, and he, like, Beautiful. by the end of the show, his song picks up, like, Toss a Coin to Your Witcher one. So, ah. like, bars have picked up so on it. So that's the story tab- behind the song. Yeah, it's so it's just him trying to get his buddy paid. Yeah, so he's making a song um, Make those money that notes. actually happened to them was they were both kidnapped by elves. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't beat anybody up, though. Geralt just made, like, a peaceful negotiation where he was like, no, I'm not going to kill you guys. You guys aren't doing anything wrong. But yeah. I'm not going to kill you. So he asked you writes this song about how he beat up all the elves and like <laughs> trampled them and sl- like did all this masterful stuff. So when he shows up at the bar, everybody's like, "Tell us about your battle!" And Geralt's like, "Wow!" Well. <laughs> yeah, he asks you to the corner like, "Don't actually tell them." And Geralt's like, "Yeah, I got like kicked in the chest and knocked out, and then I negotiated with them." And he goes and sits down and asks you's like, "What? No, you need toss a, a coin to your witch." <laughs> I gotta say, as someone who's like not the biggest fan of the show, the song, however, it's very catchy. And oh it, yeah, it was uh, apparently on accident. Oh, why don't you like the show? Why wait, wait, wait? It was on accident. Yeah, like oh, wait, it wasn't wait. entirely planned to be like a full length song. song. It was just something that was in the background of him, like you know, filling. So it wasn't quiet as they were wandering around, right? Yeah, because like, the air. Because in The Witcher, you walk around a lot. There's a lot of travel time. Yes. So in this, they kind of kept it, but they added it with like. The random monsters that spawn or like gas gears talking in the background so they're interacting right keeps it like not boring kind of deal that's good and i know why rob doesn't like this because he doesn't like fantasy for the most part yeah it's I, I, but no, no that's fair you, you've been through that we know he tried. It's okay you tried you tried that's fine i have a gripe with this avatar the last airbender there's always going to be exceptions that's sci-fi fantasy oh no, uh well, no, Avatar: The Last but uh, it's I can't. Fa- it's fantasy. It's fantasy, but it's it's not medieval, medieval fantasy. fantasy. It's also a it's, cartoon. Yeah. It's also it, it's a cartoon. I would say with Avatar: The Last Airbender, like when I think with Rob saying I don't like fantasy, I'm thinking you're like medieval things fantasy. Things that in like the Tolkien shields sort of. and swords kind of fantasy. Yeah, like he doesn't like Lord, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah. Like, like a- Asian inspired uh, like uh, fantasy where you're going back. Like I bet. Kind like of, I, I, uh, most of anime, actually. Medieval, like, like Monkey Mulan. King, I like. Yeah. So, like. Well, Mulan's not actually, like, fantasy. Yeah. Journey it, when I say history. fantasy, I'm going to be, yeah. like, specifically shields and swords, like, medieval Europe kind of fantasy. He I doesn't don't... like to think of old Europe. It's got some <laughs> sore memories. <laughs> There's actually, just a bit of history there. Yeah, no, there were certain points in history where Poland was a superpower. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wait, let's do this harder while pointing. <laughs> I'm not going that far. Yeah, I think if anyone wouldn't, it's you. Oh, no, you said it. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you challenged me. I had to do it. 
<laughs> I was just trying to keep you from making a racial faux pas. Anyways. The, wow. the thing that I'm going to be most interested for The Witcher to see how it does is when it gets into the story of the games. Yeah, I'm very interested to see if we're like... Because, like, like I said, like, that's where I tend to see a lot of like structure break down. Because when you're like... If you adapt the book, you have that act structure that you can just port over mm -hmm. and you just make things more visual. With the game, the story is told inherently oh. differently. So are they going to remix it in, just keep having these three threads? or Because you said they all ties in together the, at the, the end. The three of them are like the <coughs> whole game series. Like from, yes. From novel to the end is all Geralt, Siri, Siri, and Yennefer. Together? Yeah. So that's probably what we're going to see for season two. Yeah, I think one, at the very end of season one is when they all come together. Yes. They like beat each other, and then it's like... Pfft. Season two, getting, we have two so more you're seasons saying, confirmed. So you're already. saying the first season is just getting the crew together? Yes. Yeah, it's it's a heist movie. Heist. <laughs> I you think SOB, I'm in. I think the writer said he's like got seven seasons planned. Yeah. Wow. They have seven seasons mapped out. Uh, seasons two and three are already confirmed. <laughs> and one getting into seasons, Morty. <laughs> One million seasons, Rick and Morty together nine forever. Nine, nine, nine years, The Witcher just gonna have so much witch, and we're gonna we're gonna take Henry Cavill, we're gonna clone, we're gonna so many clones. In fact, we're so gonna, many coins. We're gonna toss so many coins. That at the sounds Cavils. like a fun activity. We're gonna bring the Cavill. How's your coins? coin tossed? Yeah. And on that note, folks, we're going to head to our next break here. Guys, thank <laughs> you so that. much for tuning in to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM CILU, around the world at luradio.ca, or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak, where your Thunder Geeks will be right back. And we're back. You're listening to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM CILU, around the world at luradio.ca, or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. That was Word Burglar with Toronton. <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> <Thank you, babe. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, just right off the hop here before we dive into it. Spoiler <laughs> warning. We, we, we've we waited two weeks now. We're allowed to talk about Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Andrew, a spoiler warning is a really good lightsaber. Mm, no. no. This movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. That's what you said about the last one, and that one. No, it was reverse. Too. Kyle loved the last one. I liked the last one. Ugh. I because I like Kylo Ren. Ugh. The other one. I, I thought this was a pretty okay Kylo Ren no, conclusion. No, it was not. This was the death of the character. Sucks. Well, but he had to die. Sucks. Did you want a Disney Plus series? Who eats a lightsaber. Um, Most okay. everyone in this movie eats a lightsaber at some point. Um, I'm not sure if you've played any Star Wars game, but like literally the the everyone throw eats a lightsaber. No, no, no. It's like your main attack. No, no, Megan. Thing. Not like it comes back. They just eat them into like the sand, the ocean, things that they'll never come back from. But some fire diver will find later on in life. Okay, that's stupid. Never yeah, mind. Pr stupid. Proceed. Stupid. There's a lot that I like. There's a lot of really it looked weird choices where it's just like, guys, you have set up so much stuff in the Star Wars universe that, and I like I I don't blame the position JJ's in. Literally everything he that, set up, so yeah, everything he set up in Force Awakens is no longer in place. So to tell this movie, and last jedi didn't really like my complaint about last jedi in the end of it like i've warmed to it as time has gone on i've gone back to it with lower expectations i'm like no you know it's still it's still okay the problem with the end of last jedi is the story never moved forward yeah they they are essentially the same but crappier at the end of the last jedi and there's no story thread that's being brought forward and that's the biggest problem with this because everything they both have to introduce explore and pay off and they are trying to get so much in here that we have that same problem we have with so many movies that we're trying to set up a cosmic universe in one movie and so especially it just, it just doesn't go anywhere no 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 the th things happen things happen it's just it's a lot of macguffin to go get a macguffin to go get another macguffin ah. to go here and then there's a sacrifice but then it doesn't matter and then there's another sacrifice, but then it doesn't matter. And then there's more sacrifices, but no, it's okay. Yeah. This, 
Kyle, I think you said it best. One of the biggest problems story-wise with this movie there's is... There's no consequences. There are no consequences. Nothing has a consequence to this thing. You could, things blow up and two seconds later the same character walks out of the explosion like nothing happened. And there's also details where uh, when we came out of the movie, we're discussing where it's just like, they introduced this and then forgot about it. It feels like there were more scenes for this movie that didn't make it into the movie and even then, this felt longer than The Avengers, even though it's like 45 minutes shorter. Is it really? Yeah. This isn't a three-hour movie. It was two hours and 15 oh, minutes. Could have fooled me. I know. It, it was that bad. Well, for some people. Like, the no, thing I is, couldn't, I couldn't do it. it is breakneck pace. They never let you sit with any moment here because there is so much they are trying to get accomplished. And that's why I hated about the last movie, but they covered up those moments with jokes. This one definitely doesn't have jokes. How it, it kind of—I mean, it does, but not like the Last Jedi had. No, the Last not. Jedi, where it's like Star Wars isn't supposed to be this funny. It's not supposed to be zingers every yeah. every couple lines. That's not how these this universe interacts like a with each other. In the movie, sure, but yeah, you're gonna have them. But when when they're in there, it's not just massive throwing it and hoping you get a laugh eventually, like a comedy would. This is when when you have a joke at Star Wars, it's in there, and it's usually gonna be very dry. It'll uh, be like C-3PO. It's going to be a throwaway line. There's one joke in the in this movie that I did. I actually, like, even Kyle, you kind of have, I think you chuckled at this point. Uh, you make the joke about the Amazon Prime. Uh, when Kylo pulls the saber from behind his back and just kind of shrugs at the Knights of Ren, just like, I got a saber. One of the most infuriating scenes. So I, I've had someone explain that one to me. What, the Amazon Prime thing? No, no, no not the right. Amazon Prime thing. So the Amazon Prime thing is, it's just his reaction there is now he's been solo. So instead of channeling Kylo Ren, who is all dark and emo and stuff, he's channeling young Harrison Ford, who is essentially, it's like, well, I got it. So it's more cocky, more, you know. To, to explain, Megan, uh, they have this thing. Would you call it the Force Dyad? So, is that what it's called? So they have the explanation. The explanation like- for why uh, Kylo Ren and Rey could communicate, like just with through the Force, they're pretty much their direct calling thing from the Last Jedi, yes. is explained that they are intrinsically linked within the Force. They are a dyad within the Force, so they are super powerful, but they are inc- like their two destinies are intertwined. It's like the two sides of a coin. To the point where. They are now able to pass physical matter through. You can express ship things. So, like, this is first established when they're, like, getting all ugly boogly at each other and, like, dancing around in circles. I like the fight visually. Visually, it's a great time. Ray's in Kylo Ren's room when he's trying to find her in the city. So, he's like, you know, they go there back and forth and they do the thing. But then he hits Vader's helmet's pedestal and that rolls. From his room in front of the ground in him. So it, she didn't have any... They kept inter- doing that direct calling thing, but now matter is passing Here, between the them. Issue. She had no interaction with that helmet or anything. So this whole room has the ability to just transport. Like if he hit a wall, does that wall transport? Don't know. Nobody that'd knows! Be, that'd be really awkward. The thing is, okay, so I'm not going to take a lack of explanation with the Force things, because the Force has always kind of been mcguffin Ben. So, so, so she just, like, passes the lightsaber? No, and not just the lightsaber. They can just pass things. Anything. 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 The weather? Screw it. It goes through. A little windy outside? Yeah, Ray's going to get a little breeze when it comes through. When no, they, they can't pass. It's Like I said, you, you're not getting an explanation. There is none. There, there is, is no. a force. Nothing has an explanation within this movie. It's all, we got to keep moving. we got to keep going. We're going to have some fan service things in here. There is so much that could have just not been in here. You want to talk about fan service? Chewie's metal. That had no point to yeah, that movie. Yeah, I was kind only of... Only to service to people that were like... That was Han's metal. No, it was... Yeah, why'd you give it Chewie? It's because the, Leia died. No, it's because people were all butthurt that he didn't get one in the original trilogy. I, I know, so I know. This is the fan I service so. moment where people are like, I'm, look, Chewie got his medal. You remember Star it's Wars? It's not Chewie's medal, though. It's not <laughs> It's not a medal for Chewie. It is now. It is now. So that he was, got his medal. Let me explain. That was the medal that Han Solo received. When Han dies, it passes to Leia since he's the wife. She's the wife. But when Leia dies, the only person left that will have appreciation for that and that, that memory 
It's Chewie. I liked that moment. Actually, you even point out that Chewie breaking down was Chewie, the saddest Chewie moment. Chewie breaking down when he finds out Leia died is the only time in that movie I had an emotional part. Yes, and that's something I really liked. Chewbacca's story, I like within this, but there's still Should've problems ended. within that. Should have ended right at the start. I ha so one of the one of the other things about this movie is when a lot of people are talking about it, one of the main points of conversation is, is like if they just would have changed this little thing and fixes so many problems. And a lot of the times it's things already established in Star Wars that can happen. So one of the really big spoilers. Well, I mean, they kind of revealed the Emperor is back, and they give that to us right in the beginning of the movie, but we don't explain. It was in the trailer. It was in the trailer, but we didn't know how it was going to really play out. I was thinking, like, we'd see him at the very end, not no, in the first five minutes. No, he just shows up because he's fine. He's <laughs> fine. He's fine. Like, it, they never explain They never explain if it's a clone. They never explain if he somehow survived the With reactor little, thing. Like, singed finger his singed fingers. So, so it looks like he blew up, and the Death Star didn't really blow up all of the way, I guess. Yeah, that thing disintegrated. But the first... Disintegrated. I know. <laughs> but the first third of the movie is doesn't need to happen, because essentially... What ends up happening is with uh, Luke dead, uh, Ray is going to take up the search now for what Luke went and, you know, to exile and like was looking for and stuff, and that's the path to Exegol, the Sith homeworld. Now, there are uh, like there are quite a few planets introduced within canon Star Wars lore that are very Sith heavy that they could have drawn from, and they say, "Now nah, we're just going to make up a new one." Ah! Oh, this is a new. Planet? But here's here's the problem. So they got to go find the ship of a bounty hunter to go find a dagger, and they got to find another person that can unlock it to trans uh, tra translate that dagger the, to go to a you know, to eventually wind up at just oh it turns out where you needed to go was the old wreckage throne room of the Death Star that fell onto one of the other moons of Endor. Uh, no. So you're telling me the first. Three plot parts don't make any sense. That dagger was one of the dumbest things I've yes, ever seen. Th th this is the point where I lost faith in the movie. I was kind of on board up until then. So they start off, they go to the uh, this big festival on this planet looking for a bounty hunter that had a lead. And they find a dagger that has this ancient Sith writing on it. Which it doesn't make sense why the ancient Sith writing is on it. And C-3PO is like, I can read it, but I'm not allowed to translate it. So then they have to go to another planet. To I do meet appreciate up with. the little dude. Baba was great. Yeah, Baba Freak is very good. I also liked um, the character they introduced to be uh, Poe's kind of like old flame colleague when he was doing Love more it. sketchy stuff. Oh, Love she was not. But they never get to develop that character. Huntress yes, the Huntress. Thing? She was entertaining, but then she's just gone from the movie, right? Like, once well, we go they, later. Well, they feigned her out. Like, she died, like, seven times in the movie. Yeah. Every other character had a death scene, but then they just show up eventually yeah. later on. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, she just shows back up, and she's like, Doo -doo -doo, made it off the planet! But this is the point where it falls off, because the only way they can get C-3PO to translate all of this stuff is to reboot his memory. Yes. So erase all of his memories. No! Yeah. Don't worry, there's no Don't consequences worry, in the movie. Don't worry, it doesn't matter. Don't worry, it doesn't matter. You get some back in No like consequences in this movie. Yeah, Star Wars! Oh! C-2 just comes up and But there's, there's another no. thing. No. They do a fake for out kill for Chewie. In like the beginning of the movie, they blow him up. They straight up blow up. There is no second transport in this scene. They blow Chewie gets onto a ship. That ship, uh, they have Kylo Ren and Rey fighting over it. And then Rey gets so enraged, she shoots fights of force lightning and blows it up. Uh uh, no, it turns out Chewie was on a different ship. Yeah, he's just fine. And it's not even, you find out later in the movie, it's 10 minutes later. It's like, no, mm -hmm. he's not really dead. So you never get to sit with any sort of no. sacrifice. Because the same thing happens with C3PO. His memory's erased. He is funny. Funny, like the like. I oh, the new one, yeah, where he's just like, I don't know any of you. I don't, I don't know any of you people. He did get a lot of laugh lines, but there's no sacrifice. But here's the problem: the Sith dagger that they went through all of this problem just tells them to go to Endor to the the Death Star wreckage, and they do, and then somehow she pulls out this kind of like extension <laughs> out of the blade that has like. <laughs> Mounds in it and then has to match it up to the wreckage of the Death Star. It's like that doesn't make any sense. How would someone that doesn't build make this? any sense? How would someone build this dagger to be the wreckage of something? Place it way back in the past. <laughs> Put ancient Sith. And why would Sidious create this to tell him? Oh, it was in my old throne room. It was in my old throne room the yeah. whole time. Now here's the thing. They <laughs> okay, have this. Hold in on. Hold on. No, we can't stop. 
There's nothing. There's no explanation. You're gonna ask why, how, blah, blah, blah. The answer is it is not in the movie. The emperor is. Back. A sassy, a sassy bee, okay? Yeah. The emperor, I guarantee he was like, I'm going to leave all these stupid breadcrumbs and be, and be like super, you know... Super but here's the thing. Here's the thing. They it. set up that whole <laughs> ritual for the end of the movie. Why isn't the dagger important in that? They could have made the... That fixes the problem. Because the dagger just turns out it's like, oh, it just told you to go to Endor. Okay. <laughs> but you have an ancient Sith dagger. You make that part of the ending ritual that they go through? Nope. The dagger's purpose. But no, once the dagger's... Yeah, it's gone. Like some yeah, cult-style kind of dagger where you just take it and you're dude, like... Dude, like, let's talk about the Emperor a little bit. Let's just talk about the Emperor, because this is okay. the big thing. We so, have no idea how the Emperor comes back. Here, here's Never what, explained. Here's the big thing. One of my biggest issues... Again, no consequences in this movie. No consequences. Is that one point, he, like, sucks the souls out of two of them. Like, he's Force Shao Kun... From yeah. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. He, he your soul he, is he, mine. Your soul is mine. He yeah. takes both their souls, gets all healed, and he's like, yeah, I can I can do things now. Shoots super lightning into the sky to cause all of the ships to cease all of their electronics, right? And start falling. And this is about five to ten minutes of him <clears throat> shooting lightning straight in the sky with everybody just, like, watching him. Ray is dying on the ground, and Kyle Wen got ripped off the screen for the ninth time this movie. So... <laughs> As he's shooting lightning in the sky, all these ships are panicking and, like, screaming as they're falling down. Not one of them in that scene explodes. Nope. Not a single ship in that entire lightning scene explodes. And the thing is, is, like, before that scene, we are watching ships blow up left and right and pose pre- From, like, nearly on his own. From, like, the wind. Nearly on his own. It's like, guys, we've lost. And then Lando shows up. You want to I talk guess. about another character that has just, like, plot armor? Mr. Lando. Finn. Oh, Finn? Finn, who's on top of a vertical ship going down, hops off onto a vertical, uh, what is it? I can't remember. The Finn's Falcon. story is the worst handled here. It's not entirely his fault. There's been an explanation, because there's one thing that is really uncomfortable. ends up being uncomfortable in the movie. I have something to tell you. Oh. No, well, that's that's, that's the whole plot point. I have something to tell you, Ray. Oh, yeah, that's, that's I have something Finn's to character. tell you. That's Finn's character. I have something. And then, he's did exposition you hear the interview? Man. Did you hear the interview? No. They actually acknowledged what it, he was trying to say was that yeah. he was force, force sensitive. sensitive. Why don't you want to tell Poe? Why don't you want to tell anybody doesn't make else? Sense. So there's a scene in this movie <laughs> where they are all sinking into the sand. And everyone thinks they're just about to die. And then Finn looks over to uh, Ray. He's like, there's something I have to tell you. And then they sink into the sand. They come out the other side, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, never mind. But the way in the movie, without context, it looks like he's about to confess his love for Ray. Yeah. <laughs> While Rose is still at home. And, and there's a third problem here, because later on the movie, interest. they introduce a clan of stormtroopers that also abandoned. And then there's also kind of like romantic tension between Finn and her. Finn feels like he's hooking up with three different ladies in this movie in the way they present it in the story. I do kind of appreciate one little... I, I swear this has to be a joke, where pretty much any time Rose shows up, they're like, Hi Rose, stay on the ship. No, no, that's what I was going to explain. There is an explanation for that. because So Rose wasn't very liked in The Last Jedi. No. It feels really uncomfortable in this movie because you see Rose. And they take the time to show you Rose on screen to say, no, I'm going to stay behind. That's her only role in this movie is to say, no, I'm going to stay behind. Wow. The reason for that was is the original script they wrote using Carrie Fisher's footage involved her and Rose. And Rose was going to tie into Carrie a lot. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie Fisher dies, they only have the Leia footage they have, and Rose is in all of it. Yep. Oh, no. Her character essentially has to be written out of the movie, Good. which, Good. that, that kind of ruins the character arc that I... I think... I th- Who knows? Early on in that story, they should have killed someone, because the big thing is, is Rey thinks she killed Chewbacca, which Aww. would be a fantastic thing to have in the yeah. movie, and just have that weight over her head. Or... It said to Chewbacca, who she barely has an attachment to. Kill Poe or Finn. Kill Poe or Finn. Kill one of the two. Kill one of the main characters and integrate an inherent tension. Because no one's going to say it's okay anymore. And then you have a reason for her to have this huge dark side weight on her. They, they, like, they kill main characters the, all the time. They flutter with the dark side part of her thing in the story. Quite a bit. And then they're like, you know, she's, she's, a, she's a Palpatine. That's the big spoiler. So it turns Ooh. out that she's not a no one, she's Palpatine, which we 
When that had been announced, announced in the theater, you heard an audible. What? Ugh. Really? Yeah. 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 People so groaned. Du- she was supposed it's to so... be a nobody. Why and is I... she suddenly the granddaughter of the most powerful man in the galaxy? Chief Palpatine had a son at some point that's never addressed in any Star Wars media. Ever. Somebody hooked up with Pal- Papa Someone Palpatine. Someone helped up with Palpatine. When he looked like a raisin, no less. Yeah, Papa Palpatine had a And then Papa I guess <laughs> Ray isn't just a nobody. She turns out to be Palpatine the That's why she can shoot Fort Lightning. And see, I kind of like the idea of Ray being a nobody. Yeah. Because the Force doesn't care about bloodlines. Here's the thing is, they already have something pre-established in the Star Wars canon that makes both true. Anakin Skywalker was born because Darth Plagueis and Darth Sidious manipulated the Force and poured their will into it until it gave birth to a son. All you have to do is make it one of Palpatine's contingency plans that she gets her parents to be literally no one. Also... She... In a... In a universe where virgin birth is already a thing, and if you want to talk, if you want to explain why she's tied so heavily to the uh, the lineage of Anakin Skywalker as a dyad, this fixes everything. Instead of making it a direct granddaughter, just have another virgin birth. She was literally born to no one on Jakku. Yeah, like- she had. That's why she can't remember anything before that certain age. She is pretty much. Willed into the force at eight years old. Yeah, willed into, into existence. Problem solved. They're powerful enough to do so. And they have enough force MacGuffin shenanigans that that completely works. <laughs> and then you both have it as... You are born of no one. And you are my creation. And like... That solves both problems. She is both a Palpatine... And, and nobody. And like, okay, so the whole plan of it is like, Palpatine's like, strike me down, you... The, the Sith will go into you... This, okay, so that partially is pre-established within. I, I know, but like the that's, thing. The, that's like the whole plan that the the souls yes. go into like of the souls of the Sith will go into her, or whatever, whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure. Again, remember Star Wars because yeah. Palpatine came in here, and I'm pretty sure like there were like what four or five recycled lines from previous things where he would be uh, like, "Do it," or like the yeah callbacks yeah the callbacks to previous movies because man remember Star Wars, Star Wars. Remember so Star Wars? <laughs> um, again that's one of my biggest issues with these movies is that it's literally just it is for fan on. service and not the characters in the story they show us stuff because it's going to make the audience react not because it makes sense for this time in the story you want to know what's the most annoying thing to any person who's ever watched a movie mm-hmm. hey so the expanded universe this is actually in a detail I don't care about your extended universe, I don't If the detail's care. not in the movie, it if doesn't work. If it's not in the movie, I don't care about it. I'm not going to read 19 novellas of some <laughs> bull crap about a dude with a lightsaber who, like, yeah. whittled it around for 15 minutes so this guy can do something. So he... Here's my... Con- <laughs> so, here's my counterpoint. I have a lot of things to be upset with with this movie. However... Out of nowhere, butt pulls is as integral to the uh, Star Wars franchise as anything else. The but, only franchise part that was really planned out was the prequel trilogy. That original trilogy, though, when so, he made Star Wars, he never planned for Darth Vader to be Luke's father. So, like, in the Reve- Return of the Jedi, he never planned for Luke and Leia to be brother and sister. They made out far too much in the two movies prior. <laughs> so that's one of those things. That's something that that's something that happens all the time. A lot of what helps Star Wars, I like Revenge of the Sith more now after the so, Clone Wars cartoon. So here's like one of the things though is, yeah, like the first three movies, like six, uh, six four, five, six, four, five, four, five, six, six. original yeah. trilogy, great time. Nobody ever at any point in my life has ever been like. Yeah, but the expanded universe. The prequel movies came out. You get a little bit of it where people are like, yeah, but the expanded universe, dude. And then this movie came out, and every single person who's like, no, Star Wars is a great franchise, and this movie is a flawless send-off to the people who like did it. Your movie isn't great. I'm sorry to tell you. Um, it can be flawed. You can enjoy it all you want. Yeah. Great. It can be a Star Wars movie. I agree. Just don't. Structurally, the movie's a mess. Just don't I come won't... out of the gate saying it's the greatest movie to people who are like, oh no, on no, the no. fence, yeah, or like, well, 
shoving expanded universe down here's, your throat. Here's something. I welcome a special edition Rise of Skywalker add in because there's obviously something. scenes that were cut. I think this yeah. movie would do better. Um, my problem with the Lord of the Rings, I can't watch the non-extended editions. Yeah, because there's there's, there's not enough e stuff cut. Yeah, there's not enough of stuff explained, so I'm barreling through a story I don't understand. <laughs> I think Star Wars might benefit, and this is a weird thing to say, for like 45 minutes of extra footage to explain do, I will everything. Take, I'll take an additional 45 minutes of footage, make it a three, make it a four hour movie. Make it I a three hour care. movie. We've had Avengers. Make it a three-hour movie. Just explain everything. Just, just explain things. Explain things connected. Um, th there is a better way to do this. I, I will say, Kyle, I I'm not going to be but like... Oh, however, however, wait, 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 the expanded universe. Let's be real, though. Mandalorian is far better... That is technically expanded universe. And that's technically... Th there is a lot of good stuff happening. Um, I won't talk about it this show, but I've told you guys I've been reading the, the Darth Vader Marvel comic, the yeah. standalone one. It is fantastic. I know there were people it on Reddit were pointing so out to good. that for like some of the background stuff. Well, yeah, the, what it does is it, it deals with a lot of the things like um, Vader's rise to power being recognized as such an important thing within the, the, the Empire and being feared by the Empire, as well as stuff like uh, how he made his lightsaber, um, contingency plans that Palpatine had, and the kind of penultimate part is him building his uh, castle on Mustafar the lava planet in which he got burned. Um, they have this entire plot line where they're going through what he's trying to do with building that. And he did, ends... Did hmm. the last scene... Just speaking of like lightsabers when you brought it up. Yep. Did the last scene mean anything to anybody? Yes. Okay, Besides so... Besides it apparently being a Jedi... Her being a Jedi master now? So... Different lightsaber lightsabers? colors have meant different things. I so blue, sentinel? Yes, yes, yellow is sentinel. So they tended to be the warriors of the Jedi. So often uh, they'd be guarding like temples. Force masters. Hold on. Yes. Yeah, they're they're like they're all about logic, defenders, uh, councils. She is not about logic. <laughs> no, <laughs> their no, no. grounded approach helps them feel comfortable with who they are. Wow, no, that's very wrong. But, but sometimes. Let's be fair. Colors just mean... I tend to think... Okay, they're going to get the flowery explanation. I tend to have taken them as more of... They are pretty much used as a Jedi guard. Yeah, that's what I thought they were. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they, they are pretty much... They, they are protecting very high-valued things, typically, because they years. are... Yes, that's exact. So that that's essentially what we're being told, is that her staff has been transformed into a double blade oh i think i don't know if it's double blade i hope it's a double bladed yellow can lightsaber we, i think uh, that sounds cool can i point this out too yes that this was the greatest fact that i've ever read on reddit is that she buried anakin's lightsaber in a planet of sand mm -hmm, yeah, which he uh, loves so much <laughs> so so much yeah. so sentinels, I love that sentinels are supposed to be able to balance both their lightsaber and their force powers yeah, yeah. equally there we go yeah. Yeah, what I was going to say is, I don't think this is like the greatest Star Wars movie. I don't even think it's in the top five, but I still enjoyed it. There were some things. Visually, it was nice. A lot of the action scenes. The shots scenes, of the first, or the final order were amazing. Um, Like cinematography wise, I think it looked beautiful. Like a lot Except of the fights. The, fight. the Knights of the Ren fight was that, disappointing that, because they, they were going with that gimmick. They cut it a lot. There's a lot of like jump cuts. There's a lot That's of jump cuts. That's what I said about the fight in the last movie where it was all with the red people. Oh, it's much worse. No, 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 no. no. It's worse it's than that worse. one. It's worse. No, no. That fight I, I, so... I disagree. I loved the the, the, the red. The... Yeah, the red fight. I mean, okay. No, I. We visually it was nice. We do have to wrap up. As I, was, I, I have to cut you off. We're literally at eleven fifty nine, so yeah. I do have to wrap up the show here, uh, Megan. Oh, watch no, the stream no, no, no. for more because we're not gonna stop. Okay, guys, thank you, know, thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, we've been brought to you by 102.7 FM CILU, around the world at LU Radio, that's here, streaming live at Facebook.com slash Thunder Geek Speak. I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. And I'm Kyle. And we're your Thunder, Thunder Geeks. Geeks. We'll see you next week.